Cosmeric Leaf and Fuse in Place. From Allomancy to Surge Binding, there's a lot to look out for. We're your hosts and escorts to the realms. I'm Griff. And I'm Alex. And, and this, this is, is the Silverlight Silver Guide, Guide to the Cosmere. Welcome back, bookworms. We have a guest here today. Indeed. Indeed we do. Wolfie and Darwin are not the <laughs> guests, but they are also present. For those listening, those are dogs. But today we have with us a person we met at Dragonsteel 2023, The Sandbox, a.k.a. Trevor. Trevor, you are on YouTube. Uh, you yes. go by The Sandbox on YouTube. How long have you been YouTubing? Um, I think we're at four years now, over four nice. years. Yeah. Nice, nice. Four years. Uh, recently, uh, as of today, th- about three weeks ago, you posted your Cosmere tier list, ranking all of the Cosmere books. I and, did. And short stories. Um, I enjoyed it. I thought the format was re- uh, really good. The way that you just kind of touched on each book made it very accessible. Um and kept it entertaining. So I would highly suggest listeners of the podcast, go check out your channel, especially for the Cosmere tier list. Um, what else What else do you have on your channel? Oh, well, thank you for having me on today and uh, for the recommendation. <laughs> um, yeah, so the Cosmere tier list, kind of a more laid back style video, just, just me talking <laughs> out of my butt for sure. an hour. Um, but yeah, I try to keep it as entertaining as possible. I'll definitely probably definitely do redo it after wind and truth comes out this sure. year sure but um yeah i think the cosmere playlist of all the playlists i have is probably the most entertaining one it has the most variety okay there is a um some uh comedy sketches there's book reviews ranking videos all that fun stuff there's also a a video essay of sorts just kind of talking about what studio okay should adapt the cosmere yeah and uh yeah, so I won't spoil it, but I think that one is pretty high effort, pretty a uh, lot of fun. Nice. Yeah, I actually I used one of your videos uh, for research when we did uh, our first interlude, no, our second interlude on will screen adaptations help the Cosmere survive in the wild. Uh, I watched I watched your video about I think Cosmere screen adaptations, or it may have been that one with the studio you were talking about. Mm-hmm. I found it very entertaining. Um, completely forgot about it, and then at Dragon Steel, you're like. Hey, I'm the sandbox. And I was like, I'm gonna go to his channel. Sure enough, I had watched it. You had already watched one of his magical. <laughs> That's how the That's awesome. It's crazy how the world works. Yeah. All right. So okay. we're going to talk about, as uh people know from the title of this episode, which for us is to be determined, but yes, for but... the for the <laughs> listeners, they know full well that we're gonna be talking about the magic of Threnody. But before that. We're going to talk about some Sanderson news that may or may not be pertinent as to when this episode comes out. So the first thing is we have from the year of Sanderson, everybody loved the pins, right? Everybody loved the pins. Well, they are going to sell the pins on January 30th on the Dragonsteel store. You will be able to purchase the whole set of year of Sanderson pins. Oh, okay. Easy peasy. Indeed. And then if you're somehow not Cosmere aware of the fact that they are weekly releasing videos about two to three minutes in length um, about the different radiant orders from the Stormlight Archive, those are on YouTube. Uh, They're releasing one per week up until the release of their crowdfunded campaign for the Leatherbound Words of Radiance. And what has happened is that Dan Wells has written a character discussing the different Knights Radiant Orders from their point of view. Oh, interesting. And they have Kate Redding narrating. Nice, nice. And they just kind of go through as if it was a Myers-Briggs personality type. (laughs) Um, And it's very good. They just did the Truth Watchers. Okay. uh, And some of the comments are hilarious. (laughs) I'm sure. Definitely go check it out. And then the third thing I have here is that Sanderson, in his weekly announcement, uh, did 
state that the hotel bookings, the hotel, the group rates for the hotels were available. Already. Good Lord. And almost sold out. Good God. So uh, I would suggest calling the hotel that you want. Um, they are not available online anymore. The Thursday and Friday have completely sold out for the four hotels uh, that they book. They have group book booking rate for. Right. Thursday and Friday are completely sold out. And more days on either side of that are potentially sold out. But if you call, there's a chance that the agent you speak to will be able to find something. Right. You, right. Picking up what I'm putting down. Uh, and then, um, so we did this for for my wife and, and my room um, because the Holiday Inn Express is cancelable. We went ahead and grabbed uh, a room and the agent said to call back through the year. So not all hope is lost, right? Right. But right at the moment it may seem hope is lost just call regularly um but also be aware that they tried to get me into a timeshare scam thing so, uh. <laughs> so stay away from that just be like oh yeah no i don't think um i want a really cheap vacation from you where i have to attend a timeshare thing thank you yeah so, that's uh because if you haven't watched john oliver's video on timeshares on youtube from his segment on last week tonight it's it's revelatory um, and to break it down, timeshares, uh, the people who work at timeshares are fully allowed to lie to you. Oh, lovely. Um, and it is almost impossible to get out of a timeshare. So don't do that. Don't, don't stay on the line. Um, $200 for a four night vacation, not worth going no. to have to, for a timeshare, unless you have a really strong will, I suppose. Anyways, now that our first tangent is out of the way. I believe that's it for Sanderson News. And all right, we'll dive we'll dive into Threnody. Threnody. So Threnody, what do we know? We have we have things, right? So we see Threnody in two books, one of which we're gonna talk about. Well, yeah, Threnody specifically. Threnody specifically is in one uh novella. Well, okay, here's we've seen Threnodians in multiple books. At least two. At least n three. Specifically three. What's the third? Uh Wax and Wayne, the Haunted Man. Oh, are you talking about Naj? Yes. Oh. Hmm. Okay, well then four. Yeah, that's true. Okay, Naj does it, okay. excluding Naj. Okay, well, excluding Naj. <laughs> Threno Threnodites as a whole, not Naj specifically. Okay, uh, really, we've seen them in two books. Yes, what? we have so, seen. Them. Yes, specifically novella. Uh, if shall, we're talking about more than a singular person, then yes, we have seen them in two. Oh man, Threnody is just the friends we made along the way. <laughs> the <laughs> real Threnody is the friends we made along the way. Yes. <laughs> right. Right. Yes. Okay, so we've seen Threnodites in two novels. Yes. Two two stories. Yes. The first is Shadows for Science in the Forest of Hell, mm -hmm. which is one of my favorites. Yes, it is Love a very it. good short story. It appeared in an anthology called Dangerous Women, and I don't know about the other stories in that anthology, but I can guarantee you it is the it is chocked full of the most dangerous women. I believe there was actually a butcher story in that one. I think Pro George R. R. Martin too. Yeah. Yeah, so I mean full of full, full of a lot. Yeah, full of good good authors. Good authors, supposedly. The second book is The Sunlit Man. Yes. Which they have not done a spoiler stream for yet. So we are going to until later in this episode remain spoiler free for The Sunlit Man for our intents and purposes up until that point Sunlit Man doesn't exist. So here's the thing that I will say. While the Threnodites do up here in Sunlit Man. If I have because, to edit this, no, because no, no, it's you, a spoiler. you won't. You won't. It's not spoiler. I'm going to say because the magic system is so different. I would almost say that. I don't really consider them the same. Yes, that's yeah. 
I'm, sure. I'm just leaving it there. Like I'm not spoiling well, yeah. what what is different, but I'm just saying that like I think we'll touch on that. I think we'll touch on that after the spoiler. Right, spoiler right. Of section. course. Yeah. I'm just I'm just gonna kind of bring that up here, which is like yes, technically, but mm. sure. Now, um, Shadows for Silence in the Forest of Hell. We are not we're not reviewing right now. No, we are not reviewing the book itself. However, we are talking about this because I believe it's Trev one of Trevor's favorites. Uh, as well, and you are a, a horror fan, right? Oh, I love I love it all, but yeah. yeah, horror is a. I will also say the reason I brought up Naj is that I think Naj shows an advancement of the Threnody magic system. That's fair. In his appearances as the haunted man, that's true. So we can't we can we can talk about that, that. Is why I did bring Naj up. Yeah, so. we can we can use that as a kind of. Where where does he appear as the haunted man? In That's wax, in wax and wane, in is it the third? It's this. It's shadows of self or the bands of mourning. Yeah, he appears in, originally in a uh, as part of the broadsheet, one of the broadsheet stories. Mm, mm -hmm. And then I believe he actually appears. Does he appear canonically, or is it another broadsheet story in? Was, wasn't he the guy that lost gave metal? Wax some maps. I thought there was someone in that, uh, I forget the name of the town. It's kind of like on a cliffside, there's waterfalls. Um, it's one of the big places they go before venturing out more. I don't think that was the Haunted Man. No. That wasn't Naj, okay. I don't think so. Naj, Naj only appeared in the, in the, as far as I, well, I mean, it could have because Chris was there in That's true. the Bands of Mourning. Yeah. Right? I think. This is getting all confuddled. Let's go back. <laughs> let's start simple. Yeah, let's start simple. <laughs> let's start That's simple true. with That's what true. Trinity is. Okay, so you're a fan of horror. Uh, what what kind of horror do you, do you like reading it, listening to it, watching it? Yeah, I mean, uh, I read it, watch it, consume it however I can. I, sure. Uh, <laughs> I'm not picky. I, I recently read what I would consider to be a horror story um, called Melmoth by Sarah Perry. Uh, it was a very slow burn uh, in terms of horror. What what kind of horror have you read recently? Um, you know, I uh, I've kind of tapped out on Stephen King, okay. right? So I've kind of been venturing out more. Um, I read The Haunting of Hill House pretty recently, and okay. picked up a graphic novel actually. Uh, forget the, the the author's name, but it's called Whist, hmm. and uh, just saw it on TikTok trying to be more supportive of the indie sure. authors and um he uses mid journey like the ai mm -hmm. to keep uh the art coherent throughout the story right sure um because he's not actually an artist but he just does the story so that was kind of cool and he's very upfront about using ai mm. and doesn't take any credit so yeah Neat. i would uh, recommend it it was a quick read like an hour okay Cool. Well, and Magnus Protocol just started, yes. which is the sequel to the Magnus Archives, which is, in my opinion, one of the best horror podcasts in existence. Mm, I think it is the best horror podcast in existence. Yeah, probably. I was hedging my bets there, but yeah, you you don't need to. We can have strong opinions here. <laughs> this is a safe space. That's fair. That's fair. Uh, yeah. yeah. No. Uh, Jonathan Sims. One, his voice is just perfect for. Yes. Uh, the. Um, the 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 titular ar uh, archivist, yes, of the same name. Indeed. Indeed. Actually, does does John is it the same last name for? I don't, I don't remember. I don't remember either. Yeah, but it's a great podcast for horror. Yeah, it's it is. It is phenomenal. Like all the, sorts of horror. The Do way you guys like scary movies. Potentially. It depends. I am somewhat picky with my scary movies. I picky am. How? I don't. Okay, so like, like if it's camp gore, like the old slasher films, I don't mind mm -hmm. it. But I do not like an, an extensive amount of realistic gore. Mm. Like movies like Hostel are definitely off my list. Definitely. So like Home Invasion, you mean? Like, no, more like gore, like blood, oh, guts, okay. just that like kind excessive. of thing. Yeah, like a psycho going around camp, killing people. I get it. Yeah, so like like that I don't mind. The campy kind of stuff from the 80s, that doesn't bother me. 
Okay. But as they've advanced in effects and practical effects and things like that, where the gore is more realistic nowadays, sure. Mm. That's that's definitely not where I like my horror to go. Sure. So okay. my my wife loves horror films. And I used to hate them. But I think in the last few years I've watched more horror films than I have the rest of my life. <laughs> so I have some yeah. hot takes. First, The Nun 2 has the best opening to any horror movie at any horror movie I've ever seen. It was brilliant. The Nun 2. Okay. Absolutely. I enjoyed that one. I yeah. forget what the opening was. It was the um, the boy goes down uh, to get the commun- communion wine. Oh. Right? That's the right. moment when, mm. um, remind me of the demon's name. Uh, Valak. Valak. Right? Valak. The Valak. moment Valak appears, I'm having goosebumps right now thinking about it. Brilliant. With the... Mm, so good. It was incredible uh also yeah. watched my, my oh, wife hates horror oh so okay like, kind of opposite there but she's gotcha. starting to get into it now okay and i've been showing the conjuring universe to her because okay. she likes the universe stuff she loves sure. the cosmere she likes mcu right so she's like on board now fully yep. hooked yep um and we just watched conjuring 2 which is nice. my personal favorite okay of that series because of the nun i yeah. think i'm not sure how many conjuring movies i've watched i know i watched the latest one um, and I actually, I really enjoyed it because it was, it was building that universe. Like, you know, um, mm-hmm. if I'm thinking of the right one, they have, they have the room filled with artifacts from the other movies in the universe. Oh, um, the Annabelle comes home. Um, no, I haven't seen any Annabelle ones. I okay. know that for sure. Uh, and it does have the main, the main family, the, the husband, wife, the Warrens, the Warrens. Yes, it did follow the Warrens. So I think have they had four conjuring movies. Whatever the latest one. You the third like a year or two ago. Yes. I've seen the third one. I actually greatly enjoyed it, mainly because it was more um, thriller than it was horror, I guess, in Mm -hmm. my opinion. Um, And I promise we're going to get back to Threnody for those listening. (laughs) But when do we get to talk horror? We're not going to get to talk horror again until Dan Wells' novel comes out. Well, and see, that's I think that's for me kind of that thing where I like my horror to be creepy. Mm Mm-hmm. And thriller, that kind of aspect, I'm not a big, like, I, if a movie relies too much on jump scares, that's Mm -hmm. just startling me. That's not scaring me. Sure. That's not, that's not being horrifying. That's just being startling. That's true. That's a good, that's a good, um, designation specification. I got, I got two recommendations then. Two recommendations. Um, These are the ones I'm like telling everybody about from, from this past year. So you might've already seen them, might've heard about them, but definitely worth giving a shot. Uh, the first one was Talk to Me, which, okay. funnily enough, was made by YouTubers um, who make the dumbest videos I've ever seen. But also <laughs> pretty funny. Uh, it's like Ronald McDonald on crack or something. I don't know what he is, but <laughs> they made a horror movie, and it's the best I've seen in a long while. Really? It was really good. It, there is a little bit of gore, um, but it's I don't not... mind a little bit. Like, it's it's just when it gets excessive. I think there's only like one and a half scenes that like is about the gore, but the gore is a purpose for the the story. Interesting. Um, the other one is Hulu uh, original. No one will save you. Okay. It is it, home invasion meets alien invasion. Yes. And it's like kind of like a silent film. I'll, Loved it. Thought about watching that. Um, unfor- you know, my wife and I really, we like to do a lot. We have a lot of hobbies. We like to watch a we we like to watch TV and movies as as a hobby. So we do rely heavily on critic reviews to determine what we're going to spend our our time on, right? So I think that was kind of middling in the reviews. But now that you've said it, you know, the next time we're looking for horror, might might go for that. I will say it is one of those divisive films, okay. and usually I am always against the device. Like the Halloween uh, ends, I hated it. <laughs> Um, was that the second or the third of the that's the third like most recent one where it's not about anything <laughs> except for like a 10 minute thing in the end hmm. um and then like jurassic world dominion why is the dinosaur franchise now suddenly about bugs you know what i mean like those divisive ones i was i i'm on board with the hate sure but this one was very purposeful it was a, kind of an artsy ending to it okay. but i actually really enjoyed it because thematically Mm. It fits in with the whole story. Neat. Well, that's yeah, so that's good to know. I like even warm. It's a little divisive, but I liked it. Little divisive. Okay, good to know. So, I will also throw out. Uh, I picked up 
Hollow City by Dan Wells at Dragonsteel 2022. And then I got diagnosed with appendicitis and they tried to take my appendix out and it didn't take. So they had to do it again. But after that mm. first one, I did, I Hollow City carried me through my recovery. Um, a great first person frenetic follows a character with schizophrenia and it it actually has like a, a genuinely novel ending like i enjoyed it so just throwing that out there i have not I've been meaning to check out dan wells so yeah. that'd be a good entry point i haven't i haven't read his i am not a serial killer stories yet i'm thinking about i, I might read the first i meant to pick it up at dragon seal 2023 but I did not, and I apologize. And then the time that I saw Dan Wells in the vendor food area, I wanted to say hi, and then I didn't. But he and I both have blue crystal mass candy on our nightside uh, dressers, and I think that's a strange coincidence. That is very strange. So, coincidence. all right. So back to Threnody. Indeed. So Threnody comes from uh, it's like it's a lamentation, right? Like it's a. It's a song yes, for the actual grieving. word mourning. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the actual word is like a mourning song. Right. Uh and which is a brilliant name yes. for the planet. Um and I also think it it was a brilliant idea to do a kind of puritanical The religious vibes society. are strong. Yes. Yes. Uh or I should say the the specifically um very dogmatic Christian vibes are yes. strong. Yes. So with that as the background, we're going to discuss the magic system. And we're going to start we're going to start with the simple rules. Does anybody does anybody know off the top of their head what the simple rules are? No lights, uh, no 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 fire, no blood. No running. Right. So there's three rules. The first is well, I don't know about the first. No lighting a fire. No lighting you a fire. You can't yes. light a fire. Which means in world Sanderson has a profession where you carry around fire to sell because yes. it's already lit. Okay. Um, the second is yeah right no no running don't do anything hastily. Um, mm -hmm. I think especially at night because uh, they're more aggravated. But uh, yeah, you don't want to move quickly because it will enrage them. And then the third is you can't. Uh, spill blood blood can't touch the air right uh, so they have uh, Sanderson has some good workarounds for that so uh, I would highly encourage you to read or listen to the story listener if you have not listened to Shadows for Silence in the Forest of Hell first best name of any <laughs> short story in my yes, opinion. Yes, honestly, ever. like you read it the first time without any having any context for the story and it sounds like gibberish. Yes. And it also feels I think it's iambic pentameter shadows for silence in the forests of hell. Quite possibly. It just um it's so lyrical. Yes. Which really helps because Threnody is a song of grieving, right? So lyric Cool. There, yep. Yes. There's yes. a connection there. My brain might not be forming it. <laughs> uh, but why? Why do they have the simple rules? Why? Why do they keep that? Why do they? Why do they hold to those? Well, because if you don't, then the shades will come for you. The shades will mm -hmm. come for you. Um, it's interesting, Griff, that you said that gives you Christian vibes because I think the simple rules are based off of practices that um jewish people don't do during shabbat oh and that very well maybe. are they really i think he said it was a deliberate choice i th i think i saw a word of brandon on that sure that makes i mean that makes a lot of sense right neat didn't know that huh that would be interesting to dive into so mm -hmm. i know in a in a way side tangent but still still applicable having Having a society with names that are based on grieving or, or, or puritanical names, it's a little weird. Well, and that was a big uh, vibe for um, like puritanical Christian sex was to have sure. names based on sects. concepts. Yes, yeah, sects. S-E-C-T. -S -E yeah. 
uh, where they did have names based on concepts. That's where we get names like Hope and Joy sure. and Prudence. Absolutely. And even Ruth, actually. A lot of people don't realize that, but Ruth is actually one of those names. Right, right. And then um, those people who no longer have Ruth are ruthless. Exactly. Even the Threnodites have names like that, right? That's what, I, yeah. And that's what I'm saying. Like The Threnodites yeah. are based on this puritanical concept of having names that are concepts. So we have names like Silence right. rather than more traditional female names. Um, but like, yeah, the names like Prudence and Joy and things, that's where we get those names from are these puritanical communities. Certainly, certainly. And it, you know, in, I guess what I'm saying is there's a lot of leeway for the author is translating what has happened in this universe into for in our case English we are reading it in English right right to have a society that kind of has not just the names but also kind of the dressing or the the clothing not the dressing they're not salads the clothing <laughs> Um, and it was, it, it, it sticks out and I don't know if that's a negative thing for me. It sticks out compared to a lot of the other Cosmere natives. Well, and I think it also does a very good job of bringing this almost very, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? almost sort of the the fatalistic nature of some of those communities mm -hmm. where they were very repressed they were very dogmatic they were very and and so it kind of brought this very oppressive nature right. to the to the um to the theme of the stories and i think it it mixed well with the horror aspects they were bringing forward in the story that's fair. That's I think fair. it did a good job of putting us in the mindset of it. Sure. I mean, the rules are exactly what would be in the first 10 seconds of a trailer for a horror movie. Like, here's the three rules. You do not do these three things. And then, of course, in that movie, you see those all three, three things. things done. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's, that's a really good way of putting it. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's the perfect setup for a horror. I mean, I don't think we entirely got that. In no, Sounds, but no. I think the, the horror movie or the horror novel that we do get. 100% is going to dive deep into that. I I really hope so. Honestly, on, I would Wells. of all of those, I think that I would love to see Shadows for Silence or any associated stories as a live action horror film. Oh, 100%. Yeah. I think more than anything else, well, I would love to see a lot of the other films animated personally, just sure. just for my own personal mm -hmm. bias. Um Shadows for Silence in the Forest of Hell would probably be the one exception to that. Sure. I would love, so again, if you haven't read the story, listener, you are going to get spoiled. At, at this point, you have been spoiled quite a bit, but I am about to completely wreck your perception <laughs> of the world. If you have not listened to the story, you are going to get spoiled. It is going to be more spoiled than the milk that I accidentally drank this morning. It was gross. <laughs> If they do a horror movie, the horror is not the shades. No. The horror is silence coming after mm. the people in the forest. Yes. Right? And if they could if they could play up that dichotomy, if they could, you know, show a silence's story, but when when they want to do the horror aspects, it is silence who is the horror, which I guess, you know, is it uh, horror versus terror? I'm not gonna mm. go in there. But um, really play up that this one person is capable of doing these horrific things. Mm -hmm. That would be. I I might have to disagree with you. Go go for it. You are I free. Might, just because silence is the pinnacle final girl. Okay. This is about badass feminine sure. characters, right? Sure. Um, and I think there, what you're saying is the great like twist at the end. OK, right? like maybe you reveal I mean, I think they reveal the certain big twist at the end um, about a certain. Oh, yes. I don't even want to say it. 
but uh that's fair yeah so like that's that's what gives you that kind of edge to leave the viewer with like oh man okay gotta rewatch that that is that is okay if they, uh, okay i can see it if they play that up that final if they really play that up and leave us with that really deep feeling of horror and conflict um mm -hmm. for humanity and, and what we've lost um that would be okay I don't, I allow mm -hmm. it. I mean, not that anybody, okay. not that I was going to stop it, but that's, <laughs> that's a good, that's a good take. I'll agree with that. I'll kind of, I'll play down what I was saying. Um, I think um, there, there's a lot of potential there. But I do think that the rule, I mean, Sanderson's a genius. I, I mean, I'm of the, of the notion that Spren and ideals from Stormlight are mm -hmm. a little bit of cheating because they're a little bit too brilliant. Um, <laughs> it's kind of like cheating, <laughs> but I think the rules Knowing what Sanderson has done, if you've read his other works, they have to be attached to the magic system in some way. Yeah. They're not just there for the world. That's the true. The magic is connected with them. Maybe capital C, I'm not sure. Ooh. But, okay. Okay, hit um, us. Hit us with yeah, your... Yeah, so this... we know... Okay, so yeah, let's get into it. Okay. Um, silver. Silver. Silver is a huge commodity on the planet. Mm -hmm. It's abundant, but it still is highly valuable because of its value of you know yes. defending off shades and right? again right there we have the religious vibes again silver was considered mm. a holy metal uh, a holy metal okay okay yes so just and i i have a theory on that well i'll share it later um, Okay. but yeah i agree with you griff um but there's a a moment in the story i f uh yeah it mentions that a circle of silver will defend you if you break the rules which is also, I mean, a circle of like salt is very common. In yeah, the, the magic lore. circle is a pretty common mm -hmm. thing. Definitely. Salt yeah. is Spongy also Bob a did it, common know, one, so. but or a common one. Yeah. Okay. So now that that leaves a load of uh, questions in my mind. Um, yeah. Does it make them blind to the shades? Mm. Is it? Um, yeah, I don't. I, feel I like mean, there's it, more play to it, right? It might be because the fact is, we know that shades can't cross a line of silver. Although, if they touch silver, it does tend to weaken the the uh, effectiveness of it over time. Yes, yes, but it is interesting to wonder: Are things within a circle of silver? Does that make it opaque to the shades? That's. That's an interesting question. That would actually be a great question to ask Sanderson. If anybody gets the get chance, <laughs> you would probably get raffled, um, mm -hmm. but you get the little raffle card. So we should take one tiny step back and just real quick discuss the shades. Mm -hmm. um, right. So they are cognitive shadows, a version of cognitive, a version shadows. of cognitive shadows. Um, I believe we're going to talk about how they got here. Uh, that's not necessary to understand kind of the more magic-y bits. Um, and I know, Trevor, you have theories. Now, here's an interesting thing. Okay. We do know typically that when cognitive shadows occur... Right. Unless they have a powerful source of investiture... Okay. They are eventually degraded and sucked into... The great beyond. The great beyond. Whatever, whatever afterlife is mm. there. Mm. So my question is, what is the... What is the power that is keeping the shades here? Trevor, answer it. Oh, man. What have you I, got? I, I don't know the answer, but yeah, I think yeah. the most common theory is that the way to the spiritual realm is currently blocked on Threnody. Oh. That would be an interesting concept. That And that's... Well, yeah, okay, I mean, but now... We'll talk more about it, but... Ooh, now here's, here's a question, though. Okay. Is it the way to the spiritual realm or is it the way to the cognitive realm? Because the fact is, is that we know that when Kelsier, this is major spoilers for more than just <laughs> Threnody. We, we can't say it yet. We can't say uh, it yet. Okay. Then I, I'm going to need to discuss something later that dives into cognitive shadows in another portion of the cosmos. Yes. Yes. Let me, let me give my theory now, Alex. Okay. Just because I feel like it's a little bit tamer for spoilers. Okay. Um, all it all it requires is the knowledge of a certain shard on this uh or yeah i think yeah, that's a certain fine. shard of this planet i think that's fine. fine that's words of brand because so, it's it's ambition right for Threnody? it's ambition um so i mean if you're gonna do a cosmere horror i feel like this is a little bit too basic but sanderson okay. also gives tons of uh 
variables that make it less basic. Okay. Um, but we all know that, like the ghost lore is that when someone dies, speaking of Earth, us, uh, you know, someone sure. dies and they have a purpose left undone on the planet, uh-huh. they come back as a ghost. They huh. stay. Their spirit stays. They're not ready to move on yet. Okay. What is ambition? Like the word ambition. Ah. I feel like there's a little bit too much connectivity there to be coincidental. That, you know what? That's, that is. And then, and then you pair it with the, uh, the, uh, the, what is it called? The cold iron, right? Iron you can't do because that's already established. Uh, that's true. Resource in the Cosmere. Okay. Silver was, I think, free. And so, and uh, Sanderson saw the opportunity and went, we'll do that close enough well and there is obviously again there is the religious aspect it's actually silver uh, point of fact complete tangent one it was considered holy metal two it's why we didn't uh accept rifling until mm. way later Rif- rifling I, I rifling the the barrel yeah. the rifling of a barrel right so mm-hmm. what happened is that they developed rifling a long time ago long before we actually put it into application in in the world okay but the fact was is that um some people said that demons enjoyed the spinning and other people claimed that demons that it threw the demons off the bullets and made them more accurate and so the church did a a test where they took a normal bullet and they took a silver bullet printed with a cross Mm. and put them through rifled barrels to see which one would be more accurate and obviously the iron bullet was more accurate because that's okay and so they claimed that no demons like the spinning and it was evil <laughs> but but yeah silver bullets right with werewolves and other yeah silver yeah abilities. exactly again silver yeah. bullets and actually it was a silver stake uh hollywood was also an option for the stake but uh in vampire stories a lot of time it was a silver stake not just a wooden one wow okay did not know that okay Wow. So, yes, yeah, silver is considered a holy metal. Uh, so it, mm-hmm. it also makes sense why it would be in place in something that had as many religious Christian vibes as Threnody does. Sure, sure. So to take that many step backwards that we haven't done yet. <laughs> shades, <laughs> shades are cognitive shadows. They are lurking around. They happen when some people die. Um, is it when everybody on Threnody dies or is it just some people? It is any, I think it's any local Threnody, right? Is it it does seem to be any, Threnody? yeah, it does seem to be any person that dies. At least any person that we have seen die in the text. Okay. Has left a shade. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so anybody dies, they leave behind a shade. Very ghost-like. They have no eyes, right? And then they... No, they have they green glow, eyes. They glow red. Glow green. And they're mad. They well, glow- yeah, they glow green initially, and then they glow red when they're mad. Hmm. Is it green always, or is it, like, not really existent, and then they, like, glow green when it's... Something's happening. I thought it was blue. I don't even know. <laughs> mm, it's definitely green to red. I don't remember if it's nothing to green, or if it's green all the time, and then... Because it could be green when something catches their interests initially. Does the color matter to you? Alex? And then red <laughs> when they're angry. <laughs> well, we're trying to tell them. We're trying to tell the listener who may have not listened or read uh, "Shadows for Silence in the Force of Hell" recently. Um, all right, we've got. Okay, here we go. During the daylight hours, non-enraged shades are fully transparent and therefore invisible and respond to violations of the simple rules more slowly than they do at night. Okay. Um, When night falls, okay, so it is dependent on day and night. Okay. Um, They appear as ethereal, translucent, white figures that glow softly in the night. Okay. And let's see. A shade's eyes are said to be dead looking, mm-hmm. void of any emotion or any sign of life. Thank you to the Copper Mind uh, and the people that run the Copper Mind for, yes. for your help here um, from the past. Violations of the simple rules cause a shade to enrage and take notice of, of the physical realm. Oh. Quick motion will only draw the ire dur- their ire during the night. It appears the least dangerous rule to violate a shade's enrage more slowly. Okay, we talked about the fire. 
The light of the flame blinds shades. So that actually lends credence to the silver also blinds them. Um, or, or it makes, is opaque beyond the silver, but, you know, we'll see. And then, okay, what does a shade do if it touches you? It desiccates you. Neat. Right. It draws the life force out. Mm -hmm. Which can be halted with silver powder. Yes. Even reversed, in fact, with silver powder. I'm very curious to see the difference between aluminum and silver on this planet. Right. Okay, here's the eye thing. Finally found it. Last last little paragraph here. So, okay. their eyes are burst alight with glowing green color uh, as they look more at the physical realm, right? So if somebody's running or somebody lights a fire. When blood is drawn, their eyes turn from green to crimson as they enter their most enraged state. Okay, so they are normally not lit. Yes. Uh, and then it turns green, and then it turns red. They sound like the lifeguards of the forest of hell to me. You know? There you <laughs> no go. No running. <laughs> no run. Yeah. <laughs> no smoking. Yeah. They're like, the green eyes are just kind of tracking, like, hey, I see you breaking the rules right there, but, you know, I'm not, I'm not quite pissed off enough yet. You know, I feel like that could be a really awful way to wage warfare on threnody would be Ooh. effectively throwing incendiary grenades at night mm -hmm. so that they burst into fire that would be in the an <laughs> in the enemy that area would be evil and then it of course it pulls all the shades to that area that is horrifying but shades can be um hurt with silver as well they can be you can like if you had a silver so, dagger. So shades are pretty much just beings of pure investiture, correct? I think so. I mean, if they are cognitive shadows, even a form mm -hmm. of cognitive shadow, then yes, they are made from investiture. Which, as you said before, is probably ambition's investiture in right. some way or another. Um, right. Let's talk about that real quick. So this is... Words of Brandon, right? We know that ambition was there. Right. Um, we know that Odium killed him. Yes. And we him or her? Do we have a gender for ambition? Mm, they might be them. I, I think it is a her. It probably no. is a her. Something about it reminded me of a sh of a she, but I don't. I could be wrong about that. It right. might. Yeah, I was looking at it earlier this week, and I right. think I might have been wrong, and it was a guy. Ambition was. Um. Uh, <coughs> She. Okay. Uli Da, who is a yes. um Shodel. So mm -hmm. I think one of the two non human sharks. <coughs> uh, yeah, one is a dragon and one is uh at least that we know of, right? Yes. So so mm -hmm. ambition was there. Odium was chasing her through the system uh shortly after the shattering. And then And then another shard shows up. Mercy. Hmm. Hmm. All right. Why? 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 Yes. Why was Mercy there when Ambition was fighting with Odium? Well, there's a couple of options. Okay. One, Mercy might have known Ambition before they became shards, mm -hmm. and therefore they, had some sort of. They all knew each other. Well, okay. Let me rephrase that. They were friendly with each other before okay. they became shards, and th so therefore wanted to support their friend. Right. In that fight. Yes. Because we know that while all of the shards knew each other, they didn't all have a good relationship with each other. Sure. Um, the other what? I don't know what the other option would be. I don't think that Mercy would assist Odium in shattering ambition. No, probably. I not. think I think you're right. I think it's the intent of the shard leading that vessel to protect, defend ambition from Odium. Okay. Do the you question have, is, yeah. how do they know about it? And if if they knew about Odium's plans, why would they go to stop and you know ambition from being splintered and then stop showing up to other ones? Hmm. Well, it could have been the fact that Mercy might have been damaged in mm -hmm. the ensuing fight, 
because I would yeah. assume that while I'm I'm not going to say that this is canonical, Mercy's power probably doesn't have a whole lot of combat capabilities. Yeah, but they have like infinite amount of investiture. Well, yes, but it it applies itself in different ways. Mm -hmm. There's a wound upon the spiritual realm from the fight. Yes. Right. That's and that's that's why I think they're not allowed to travel into the spiritual realm currently. But it is a great beyond in the spiritual realm because you can see it from the cognitive realm. Hmm. You can see into it. No, 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 not the spiritual realm. You can see the great you can see the entrance to the great beyond from the cognitive mm. realm. But again, I and don't I really think, want to get I think into the this is blocked. because this is spoilers beyond just Trinity, so we'll save it. We'll save it. Save it. Let's uh let's go back to more of the magic here. So we have the simple rules, we have the shades. Uh the story does a good job of showing us their interaction. But the story doesn't show us two things. What the evil that took the homeland was and who the deepest ones are. This is true. Mm. And I will say that one of the things that's interesting about Threnody compared to a lot of the other planets is that the magic system in Threnody is not in the hands of the humans. It is not something they can actively... Like, you can manipulate the shades to to take action but it's not like any of the others where they directly have control like you know the sand masters of taldane can actively control the sands the allomancers of uh skadriel skadriel you know can invest metal and then burn it mm -hmm. they are not actively manipulating the investiture themselves okay unless silver is invested on Threnody. There's a lot of theories out there that Threnodite silver is different than silver elsewhere. I I don't have any evidence for or against it. I okay. can see it going either way. Hmm. I think for some... But there's, there's a moment in Oathbringer, so we can say this for the, oh, okay. the, the spoiler talk, but there is a mention of the Threnodite silver item. Sure. And sure. Like, why would they know? Why would they care to specify that? That's, I think I have, I think I may have an, an all right answer for that. Yeah. We'll talk about that. If we, if we remember it, when we come back to the spoiler section, okay. I, I have a theory for us. So I, I got it written down here. Cool. Cool. Uh, so the reason that there are people even in the forests of hell on the world of Threnody is that they were fleeing the evil. Yes. That took over the capital H homeland. Any speculations on to what the evil is as to what the evil is? I think Many. it might be a nation or an army. Okay. Or the army of a nation, I should say. Hmm. I think it may not be a specific creature. Okay. I I think it's a full on splinter of ambition. Okay. And it and it's trying to do something maybe for the people of Threnody, but it it's warped in some way. It's it's corrupted. I mean, it could be the leftover. Yeah, it could be like a warped version of the previous magic system okay. when ambition was not splintered. That so, makes sense. so I guess what is the opposite of ambition in general? What Sloth. are Sloth. <laughs> humility? We're gonna Google ambition antonyms. Indifference, apathy, unconcern, inertia, lethargy, laziness, indolence, idleness, and so on. So, well, okay. So here's the thing. That's it. That is, I can see why those would be antonyms. Sure. But I would think on a moral, on a moral system, if we're looking at ambition with, from a morality perspective, mm -hmm. I would say that humility is probably the opposite of ambition. Because ambition is desiring more. It is thinking that you deserve or or reaching for more than what you already have. Okay. And humility is the idea of 
thinking of yourself as less, being satisfied with what you have. I can see that. I might go a different way and and just thinking in lines of Serenity and the stories there. Um, I might say that it's carelessness. If your magic system's all about following rules, okay, so that you're not turned into an undead, I would say carelessness would be the biggest vice. Sure. Of that world. Okay, that that might work. Now in so on Serenity, the shades are only found. Are the shades only found in the Forest of Hell, or are they everywhere on Serenity? I believe they're in the forest. But if you die on the mainland or the homeland, right? Right. I think you would turn into right? a shade. Yeah. yeah, I guess they, they should be everywhere. And if shades are just investiture, maybe if the evil is also investiture based, I would see it soaking up your investiture, your soul. Okay, your so I'm going work. to have I'm going to have a possible counter argument. To mm. what? Which is it might be I don't want to get into the reasons again because that this is spoiler, but it could be the fact that shades and raising as a shade could potentially only occur within the forest of hell. Okay. And as I said, I'm not gonna get into why until later. Until the spoiler section. Because sure. it does require talking about other things. But there is a very good chance that these that the shades may only be in the forests of hell, and that may be the only place where you are in danger of raising as a shade. Huh. Okay. Okay. Let's talk about um, the deepest ones. Let's theorize on the deepest ones, and then we'll jump into our spoiler. Can you remind me the mention of the deepest ones? Because I'm not actually recalling that right mention in so at the story. At some point, Silence set is worried that. She is going to draw out the deepest ones from the forest. Um, let me see if I can find. Yeah, if you can find me a passage, that would be fantastic. The fighting of shades is said to draw other creatures, such as the deepest ones. Okay. And um, a quote from the story. God beyond protect them if the fighting had drawn one of the deepest ones. Huh. Okay, this is going to be diving into some speculation here. That is the That's idea. But that, that is the idea <laughs> here. What if... So so the shades we see are relatively human. Right. They are white, glowing, ghostly, human creatures. What if the longer you stay a shade, the less human you become? Okay. And so the deepest ones are shades that have been around for a long time. Could be. And so therefore they are. Because the fact is we've never really seen a cognitive shadow stick around without a source of investiture to power it. Right. Um. I, again, this is going to that discussing yeah. why would have to get into into spoilers, but we can discuss it regardless of whether or not. I could see I could see a case being made for the fact of if a cognitive shadow is being stuck around without a source of investiture, if they're being pre pre prevented from traveling on rather than actively trying to keep themselves, I could see them losing more and more of their humanity. OK. And that would probably be reflected in the way they look, though. And act. Yeah, well, yeah, definitely. And act. Um, they could be shades that have just gone absolutely, totally mad. Sure. Trevor, what have you got for us? I, yeah, that's one of the, the creatures or unknown beings of Threnody that I know. I mean, we, we all know the least about. I was of the inclination that maybe it's not on land. Maybe it's in the sea that they crossed during their escape. Okay. Um, there is mention of, I think it was something called like, it's my notes here, the Little Ting Abyss, which sure. is an aquatic feature in the seas known for its depth, deepest ones, depth. I, I thought maybe it was something they encountered during their evacuation. Sure. 
Quite possibly. I mean, Leviathan is one of the major beasts mm. in Christian mythology. Yeah, yeah, true. Yeah, that's a great point. Huh. Giant seven-headed sea serpent, so... Yeah, I, it's all speculation here. I mean, yeah, there's there's yeah. no way for us to know until we're given more info. Mm -hmm. But I could definitely see that being a potential option. If It could be a, some sort of creature. Now, why it would be drawn to the activity of leviathans, I'm not entirely... Uh, uh, shades, I'm not entirely sure. Sure. And how it would get on land from the ocean to be a present danger land? well if if silence is worried that the activity of the shades is going to draw one of the deepest ones they would have mm. to be on land because she wouldn't be worrying about them otherwise that's true that's true yeah Am amphibious semi-invested cognitive sort of shadows <laughs> terrifying <laughs> Ter That's yeah, the yeah the real <laughs> horror. It's body there horror. There is no escape. Yeah. So here's air. another aspect. Cronenberg's, and it's a little harder to justify just based off of the name, but knowing the inspiration that Brandon is pulling from for Threnody. Okay. What if the deepest ones are something akin to demons? They could be. Mm. Yeah. Could be. They could be amalgamations of shades. Could uh, be kind of like what you've said, right? Uh, they've lost their their defining characteristics more and more as they age, and they kind of amass together, and that could present them with different. Do you think maybe? Um, I think it says that the evil creates like creatures, right? Do you think Does maybe it? it's like the general of those creatures, like it's like the leader? It's drawn to investiture because if, if we're be. going on the theory that evil wants to soak up investiture. Right. I could see like the mobile aspect of the evil being the deepest one. I don't know. Then could again, be. that would mean it's on their the in forests, the forest, and then which kind be. of defeats the purpose of evacuating. <laughs> yeah. So there was the something quality. when we were discussing the evil that just kind of sparked in my brain. And okay. it's not a great connection. It's not a huge one, but it was just one that kind of the word Satan right. in mm. Hebrew right. just means adversary. Okay. Like it's not a person, it's not a specific creature or a specific person. It's sure. just a word that means adversary. We right. see it used. However, there is a spiritual being, especially in Job, who takes on the role of the Satan. Right. It, it seems more like a a given role, a, a title given to a spiritual being, not necessarily their name. But it did strike me that when they just refer to the evil that they were running from. It kind of reminded me of that, which is why I was thinking maybe it was an army or something like that, where it was a name given to a force that they were fighting from, which is why I considered potentially an army or something like that, or a nation that they were running from, rather than a single specific being. Sure. But. Could be. I guess, I mean, hopefully we'll find out. I'm I'm hoping we will, yes, because I think that it would be, because I, I. It seems like if there was a single creature known as the evil, I find it that that would be a difficult to justify running from. Sure. Rather than just avoiding or hiding from or something like that. Crossing the sea to escape it, unless it was a force or an entire nation that was much larger than just a single creature. I don't know that. That's just where my brain is going, but I could I could obviously be very wrong. There's, you know, no real way to know. Sure. Because it was some kaiju sized creature, maybe. When I, when does that story take place? Is it era two? We don't no. know. Well, OK, so here's the thing. I feel like it's definitely more akin to era one, if not before, because we well, see not we see Naj in era two. Mm -hmm. And Naj has some Threnodite technology that is far above it's... what they currently have in Shadows of Silence. That is true. We'll talk more yeah. about that. We're we're about to go to spoilers. Uh, and I was going to say something else and just forgot it. Dang it. Oh, well. And the reason I asked is because I thought Threnody was one of the more progressed 
nations or worlds. It definitely is from what we see. Again, we'll we'll discuss that yes. during the spoilers. But... but I could but going to your point, Griff, I could totally see it being a group of people if it is farther along and there's a way to travel for groups of people. Oh, that could be. What if it's not what if the evil is not native to Threnody? Could be. Could be so one of Sanderson's bad story ideas that he's talked about on intentionally blank is uh, Vikings versus Cthulhu. So okay. what if what if he already had in place Puritans versus Gojira? I mean, right? yeah, I could see it. Puritans versus Kaiju <laughs> could work. The 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 giant leftovers of ambition found found uh found their way into something that lived in the lilting okay abyss. so here's a thing here's a potential okay what if it's not just humans that leave shades it's not animals do too what if it's the shade of some giant animal that died almost like a gojiro dragged itself i mean maybe it dragged itself up from the ocean what if right. it was some giant sea serpent that died and the shade has now come up and is now that would completely destroy my theory that it might just be the sh- the forest at least shades, but sure. Still an option. It is still an option. We are going to go to spoilers now. Uh, so cover your ears real quick. Spoilers. All right, that's your warning. Now we have full Cosmere spoilers. Okay, so the reason that I think it might just be an issue with the cognitive realm rather than the spiritual realm okay, is that when we see Kelsier die yeah. and become a cognitive shadow, he is not in the spiritual realm whatsoever. He actually explicitly cannot reach the spiritual realm except for brief moments when he's able to view it by his interaction with preservation. Okay. So I believe that the... the portal to the great beyond is on the cognitive realm not the spiritual realm which honestly might also explain why the shards are immortal oh so what you're saying is like it's like a perpendicularity but specifically for the cognitive realm to the spiritual realm that portal potentially i don't know if the great beyond is actually in the spiritual realm i think the great beyond might be a realm within itself but it can't be reached unless Mm -hmm. you're dead i think they're one the same i think you might be reading too much into it Maybe, maybe Um, not. I I mean, the fact is, is that it's hard to say. Yeah. Yeah. Because the fact is, we know that the shards can't, the shards exist in the spiritual realm, but they can't reach the great beyond. They can't pull dead people back to life. That's true. Which is why I would say that it probably exists in a realm of its own rather than on the spiritual plane. You're right. Yeah, I think it's definitely something separate so i think though that the block might be on the cognitive realm not the spiritual realm okay but it definitely i do agree definitely that there is probably something there that is blocking people from reaching the afterlife that their cognitive selves are being kept on the planet sure however that does tie into my idea of the forest being explicitly the place where shades are created, because we know that at areas in the cognitive realm correlate to places, spiritual pl- or uh, physical places on the planet. Okay. Because we know that from cell with the different magic systems being tied to locations. Right. So I could definitely, and now, as I said, I'm not entirely sure about this. It could be a planet wide phenomenon, but it could also be that whatever that blockage is only exists in the area of the cognitive realm for the forest. I'm pretty sure we have evidence that people born on Threnody, but off world die and become shades. Oh, that's true. So if that's the case, then it is. Oh, but that brings up a whole different thing because (laughs) that would mean that it's not a cognitive realm blockage that is keeping people from passing on. It means that it's something about the Threnodites themselves. Because if they die off world and become a shade in a place where that blockage to the to the great beyond doesn't exist, such as right, uh, um, Roshar or. That's true. Canticle. Canticle or what's the Mistborn 
Skadriel. Skadriel. Then it would be something about the Threnodites themselves that is keeping them tied. It wouldn't be about where they died. That's very true. Off of that, the thing that's keeping them blocked there is that their spirit web should go from however that works. They they should be in the spiritual realm connected to the planet in such a way that their shade, their cognitive shadow would go to the cognitive realm. But because of the tear in the spiritual realm in that location, any connection to the planet mm. is interrupted, which means that they aren't mm. connected to that planet in the correct way. What In whatever way it's messed up, they are forever corrupted and then that blocks their shades ability to get to the well they're, they're the shades are in the cognitive realm they pay attention to the physical realm right so that blockage from from becoming a shade and going into the great beyond i guess right it could be from the spiritual realm being messed up in that one spot because of odium and, and ambitions fight stops him from going to the great beyond Counter argument to the fact that Threnodites off world would die and become shades. Okay. Canticle. That's mm-hmm. what happens. And then um, they waste away in the investiture of Canticle. What do you mean? Wait, what do you mean? When people die on Canticle, they yeah. don't become shades. The Threnodites do. Do well, they? I'm pretty sure we saw it, yeah. Yeah. They have that big bat of shades. Right, but I thought that those were people that had died before. Didn't one of the characters, the yeah, the main character, there was like Rebecca and forget the other one, but they had a brother and they saw his face in that bat. Right. He, he I knew that there was the vat the, uh... of shades. I remember that, but I thought that, that was something they had pulled along with them to Canticle. Well, I didn't think that it had been from people dying on canticle no you you might be right because there there was an unanswered question with that where they saw their brother's face but they weren't sure if it was just the shades messing with them or not um but yeah they died to the cinder king and then they kind of showed up oh excuse me (laughs) random um yes Okay, so here it is. So a group of Threnodites fled to Canticle. Right. The first to die became Shades. That would later be known as the Chorus. Uh, Shades will turn into Sun Hearts when exposed to the sun on Canticle, which keeps them from overwhelming the planet. Gotcha. No more Shades have been made on Canticle since the Chorus. The Chorus, yes. Okay, so they do still leave behind the shades. Okay, then, yes. In that case, um, I would agree that it is something about the Threnodites being broken, not the planet itself. There is something keeping the Threnodites from passing on to the great beyond. Right. I think, I think Alex, you're right with the spirit web connection. I think that's... I feel like it's, it's, yeah. it's plausible and it stands up pretty well to Occam's razor. And it would make sense that if they're born on Threnody and they have that interruption, that yeah. no matter where they go, they're still going to leave a shade behind when they die. Because their connection to the spirit realm and their spirit web is not tied to where they are well, I mean, in yeah. regards to their like, geography. Regardless of where they are, their spirit web is effed in that one spot right uh we're gonna pause i have to get a charger for my laptop because it's gonna die okay gonna pretend that that's okay right somewhere i'm gonna hang this here there we go that's that's the recording is back on and the laptop's not going to die. Always good. Always good. That's true. Okay. You're talking about spirit webs. Yes, spirit webs. So maybe no matter where the Threnodite goes, right, they'll, they'll always be connected to that wrong spot. Right. Yeah. 
-hmm. that would make a lot of sense because if we think of, so there's an interesting point of view. Okay. And I think that this would be an interesting experiment to potentially ask Brandon Sanderson about, or I don't know. I don't know how we would, we would experiment this. If they got one of those, uh, unidentified metal mines. Okay. And pulled connection from it to be connected to elsewhere. Because we see that connection is used from a metal mind in uh, Era 2 Mistborn to allow that person to talk the language of... Right. Would that allow them to die without leaving a shade? Maybe. I think so. Probably. That would, yeah. Yeah, if you changed their connection. Yeah, if, or if, if their connection was changed to someplace else. Or if mm-hmm. or if Shy from Emperor's Soul managed to rewrite, change, rewrite, yeah, their, rewrite their, their, their spirit web. Yeah. yeah. Then I think I mean, that I think that would what happen to Nomad on Canticle. So you think you could kind of share warmth with them? Oh, right, right, right. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. He be yeah, he he yeah. his spirit web definitely changed. That's what I kind of think spirit webs is so stupid. Really? But also so brilliant. It's like it's it's the one fantasy thing. Okay. That like cuz I don't know, it's kind of redundant. You can, you already have identity, you have connection, you know, investiture. Like you have all the components, but I feel like Sanderson just needed like can I just have an like a just one thing I can just say, oh your spirit webs messed up. Like Oh, okay. That explains it. Sure. You know, well, the, the idea from spirit webs <laughs> comes from the whole platonic theory of the forms, right? Where oh, you okay. have this perfect epitome of yourself up in the spiritual realm and the, your cognitive and then physical representations are shadows of that perfect spirit self. Yeah. Right. I just you know, every time someone asks him a, a question that includes spirit webs, you can see him just audibly sigh like, oh, all right. I, 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 I will <laughs> agree with you there where I do not think that they are a, as scientific or hard magic as the rest of his universe is. Sure. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like he he uses so much physics and chemistry and like, yeah. all these rules. I feel like spirit webs has one like he's earned it, you know, it's just yeah. yeah. one, get it's, out of jail. It's a contrivance that we allow. Right. Yes, that exactly. we're perfectly fine with because. It, you know, it creating something that is not real life, you have to have mm-hmm. some level of contrivance. Yes. And and I think the way that he has has mel- molded it just it's it's totally cool. But I think that also no, yeah. on that front, I think he is explicitly not wanting the spirit web to be as hard magic as the rest of his universe. So I agree yeah. that if people are asking questions about it, they're kind of missing the point. Sure. I mean, that was my favorite conversation in Yumi was just design talking about the spirit web. I was like, oh, yeah, I, I eat that stuff up. But yeah. It's oh, yeah. No, trust surprised. me. I do. It's like, I mean, the <laughs> fact is we know that it's cracks in the spirit web from physical and or emotional harm that allows the investiture of that shard to pour into the person and make them an invested person. Right. Which is kind of, as I mean, as I said before on this podcast, it is brilliant from a story like storytelling perspective and absolutely atrocious from any other <laughs> viewpoint because it yeah. is only by being traumatized that you become an invested being yep yep yeah i mean there could be an angle to threnody in that too i guess potentially yeah i didn't think about that all of their spirit webs are damaged yeah boom so therefore on a soul level they are yeah. broken they, yeah which is kind of horrifying. <laughs> Maybe someone did throw a bomb on them, just not in the physical realm. There you go. It's true. I mean, we do know that you can reach that mortals can potentially reach the spiritual realm because of honor's perpendicularity. True. Which brings all three of the realms together. Huh. So perpendicularity, there's there's been mentioned that there are there is one or many there, but it's not a location, it's a circumstance. Right, right. So, I mean, in my mind, if your magic system, I'm air quoting here. Um, if your magic system. Oh, no. It froze. If you kill someone and turn them into a shade. You're oh. going to need to back up yeah, just a bit. You froze and none of your audio was coming through. Yeah, it froze. Um, 
How's this now? It's good. It's good. Yeah, it was just okay, the sorry. random blip that happens. No, 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 that's fine. And I knew uh, that's where I knew it's where you were going, but it's so sad it froze. Um, so start again. Um, start again. We'll yeah, just cut that. So, okay. Um, so yeah. So it mentions that perpendicularity is not a location, but a circumstance. Right. And if your magic system, I'm air quoting that because not really magic system. Um, it's just people turning into shades. You know, you kill someone, you turn them into a shade. You're basically opening up a portal. Right. Maybe. Right. Well, that makes sense because the fact is we know that perpendicularities are used to get from the cognitive to the spiritual or uh, from the cognitive to the physical realm. Right. And vice versa. That's actually what specifically else callers are being able to do. They're opening up a little localized perpendicularity. Mm -hmm. What if effectively a perpendicularity has occurred every time a shade starts paying attention to a physical to the physical realm? Oh, could be because the fact is they would literally have to be able to get to the physical realm from the cognitive realm to affect it. That's very true. Could be. Could Which, be that Chris and Naj are murderers. Well, it would mean, honestly, that getting into the <laughs> physical realm from the cognitive realm. Darwin. Darwin, what are you doing, bud? He has the cord. <laughs> He decided to walk underneath the cord instead of around the cord. Is he still trapped in the cord? Slightly, yes. Darwin, come here, buddy. Dar Darwin. Um. So, so it would mean that it'd be very, very dangerous coming from the cognitive realm to the physical realm, specifically in Threnody, because I think you might actually have to wait for the shades to become enraged. So literally, Ooh. that's that, that would be the circumstance. Uh, yeah, where you I would, would prefer that. That's that's a horror movie right there. Yeah, you have to so, draw them to get yeah, out. That, that would be that's cool. That would be good. I prefer that. That's that's a good idea. Yes, let's send that to Sanderson. Okay, yeah, sounds Sanderson, sounds perfect. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> be like, I hey, do not if think he's you have to ours. You haven't said this uh, yet. You know the I'm. You should do this. You should just take yes. our ideas. But honestly, it would make sense because that's where it's it's the shades becoming enraged, which is the point where they mm. actually actively affect the physical realm where they, you know, desiccate people and things like that. Sure. So I would say that would probably be where the perpendicularity is made. Did we not see priests? I don't think it was Nalthus. I think it might have been Cell where they were sacrificing people to yes essentially teleport yes that's uh true. yeah they were using the, the yeah he was using the energy from one of his subjects to teleport from one location to another by wasting their life mm -hmm. that's gross <laughs> and he specifically used it to do move like a few seconds it was such a waste anyway yep uh okay let's move on to uh the night brigade so the sunlit man right came out last year october right um and it featured uh in name not really on screen although we do see their ship i think right we do see their ship it featured the night brigade and the sanderson wants to write a story called the night brigade and it is going to feature the deepest ones uh, as well as, I mean, Threnodites in the future, right? Because the Sunlit Man takes place. Oh, to step back a little bit. Okay. Because we, we were going to talk about the era that Silence sure. takes place in. The reason I think it's near to Era 1 is because in Era 2, with the story of the Haunted Man, in, in Skadrill Era 2, we see on the broadsheet the story of the Haunted Man, and he specifically pulls out a silver gun... And the mm. dials on the silver gun go from green to red, and then he fires, and he seems to fire out some sort of screaming spirit that degrades the metal door on the gondola that they're on. Right. Yeah, he shot a shade for sure. Yeah. So the fact is, is that, that since they green to red. Yeah, since they have that tech in era two Skadriel, I would say that the much more basic thing of setting up silver barriers like they do. And just carrying around lanterns and using what sounds like basic firearms would be Arrow 1, which would be closer to Arrow 1 Skatrial. Makes sense. Mm. 
did we get a lot of information about between the force of hell and them arriving on canticle no just that it so. just that it took like a couple generations or something like that did it did yeah. they did they make stops along the way or is it well they were they were yeah they were trying to find a new home world and they mm. i think they mentioned that they stopped at several places or, I wonder if that... or was it that they left Threnody, like various groups left Threnody? I don't remember. Kind of reminds me of the Iriali. They're just like nomads right. themselves. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I wonder if that's because the evil ends up spreading elsewhere. Oh, could be. That was that was another theory I had on the evil. I forgot to mention. What's um, that? I could, I could definitely go without it. But what if it was the tenth unmade? Interesting. What if, what if an amb ambition and odium's fight? It wasn't just ambition's body investiture that got ripped off. Okay. Okay. And then now the reason I like it is because obviously Roshar has the rule of ten with right, everything. Right. But also like. The one deviation down from ten to nine kind of makes nine an evil number for sure, Odium. So I sure. kind of like that. Makes sense. But but even if it's not if if even if it wouldn't be called the tenth unmade unless it was on Roshar, I think you know a fight leaving chunks of investiture, like you said, I, and they mixed, right? Um, in some way, ambitions mm. got corrupted by Odium, or Odiums got corrupted by ambitions. Mm -hmm. I could definitely see that. Well, it could also potentially be, and actually this might answer what the deepest ones are. What if the deepest ones are splinters of ambition? Cause we know that ambition was splintered. Right. And we know the splinters can sometimes have effects. Like they're not like they're, the they're still, yeah. Like you can't, you can't kill a shard. You can temporarily shatter or splinter a shard, but right. so, it could obviously be the fact that those splinters might be going around only partially conscious. Hmm. Yeah, that could be. Could be. And it makes sense that the splinters of ambition would be drawn to ambition's investiture, which could be what is affecting the shades. Because we do know that it might be the wound in the spirit realm. But obviously there's investiture there. Like cognitive shadows are invested beings. Right. So now why Does he have a rule about investiture where kind of like matter, you can't destroy matter. You can only change its form. I think so. Is that a rule? I think, I think so. I think that's one of them. Yeah. I think that investiture yeah. is it's again, cannot be created nor destroyed only. Well, but no, that, it... no, no, that's not necessarily true because we do know that, you can pull investiture from the spiritual realm and right, that it almost has saying, an unlimited you can, amount. You can change the realm it's in, but you can't decrease or increase it. I don't know. You can turn it into e energy for sure. Right. Like you can't. Okay. Yeah. You can turn it into energy and expel that energy. Yeah. In the physical realm. The thing right. that I would say is that I think that investiture actually doesn't follow the same rules because I think that okay so this is this is kind of a high concept not canonically satisfied but I would see it making sense is that if investiture what if the spiritual realm is an infinite well of investiture and the great beyond is the one place where that investiture can go to be not destroyed per se but not no longer accessed within the world of the Cosmere. Okay. Yeah. I can see that. So therefore it can be created and quote unquote destroyed rather than energy, which we know cannot be created nor destroyed, only transferred or changed forms. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, that could that could do it. You need to ask Sanderson this. I feel like you're onto something. Right. We need to get him on the podcast and just ask him all the questions. I mean, I you know, if we could do that, do you know how fast I would jump at that opportunity? <laughs> yeah. 
Because I have so many questions. Just, just like, all the questions. Right. <laughs> um, back to the Night Brigade. Yeah. You don't mind. Oh, yes. I do have a lot of theories. Um, Let's hear them. So we're in spoiler talk already, yep. right? Yep. Yeah. So, okay. I don't know if you guys read the preview chapter from Wind and Truth or Knights of Wind and Truth. Yes. The the but one about just... the the uh, pilgrimage continuing. No, the, oh. the one between Yasna and Hoyd. Uh, yes. No, I have not. Oh, Griff, you got to read this one. It's so good. It's probably my favorite chapter from a Stormlight book, and it's not even out yet. That's that's fair. It's so good. It's just it's um, I won't ruin it, but I'll just say the premise is Hoyd realizing he had memories stolen. Oh, OK. Right. Um, He mentions talking to someone who is knowledgeable on contracts. OK, so I've been on the lookout for in my rereads contracts. OK, I mean, obviously, there's like Chandra, um and stuff like that, but there is one mention of a of a contract with the night brigade um i don't have the quote here but it was uh i could probably find it real quick but it was talk it the the language implied that when when they're when they're not working under a contract they do this and that and it's like wait so do they normally work under contracts okay um could be who Hoyt was talking about, which would bring night, the Night Brigade into play. Well, it does make sense because in Sunlit Man, we do see the fact that they have a contract to. I don't remember if it's capture or kill. Um, oh, what's his name? Nomad. Yeah, but what's his actual name? Sigzel. Thank you. Mm-hmm. They we do know that he has, that they have a contract to either. I don't remember if it's capture or kill Sigzel. It's probably um, capture, probably. Because right. then they can use the continuity chain to find where the Dawn Shard went. Right. Mm-hmm. So it would make sense that they probably work under contract as sort of a mercenary. They just take on whatever job they're paid to do. Okay. I'd say that that's that is a a, a moderately spicy take, only because I think the timing of when the Night Brigade exists would be. Well, quite, quite a bit after Stormlight Five. Okay, counterpoint. Okay, what if the Night Brigade started a long time ago and their sure the name has just continued on, right? To be spacefaring. Yeah, like I mean, the fact is, we have the sure. Catholic Church, and we know sure. when the Catholic Church was actually started. That's why so. I said moderately spicy. Right. That's. I a, mean, if they yeah, if they left their planet, I don't know if the the name Night Brigade, you know, retains its meaning, or yeah. significance. But and I found the passage here from the Sunlit Man. Um, Sigzel Nomad is talking that he says, I know of no force more dangerous. They have been known to leave entire planets desolate. Fortunately, the Night Brigade aren't mindless pillagers. They're a precision force and will do whatever their contract, or in this case, their goal demands. Okay. Which makes sense well, because... Are they, not, are they not moving of their own volition? Are they under a contract now? Hmm. So who who's after the Dawn Shard in right. that case? You know, there's a lot of questions there. Sure. That's I will true. say that I think we're going to see the point of the Cosmere change as they become spacefaring. I think we're going to see because like right now we see Odium. And he's one of mm-hmm. the major players and he has his goals. And most of the and other ambition. shards are kind of doing ambition. their thing. Uh, autonomy. Autonomy. Yeah. Uh, which I don't know what autonomy's whole goal is self-improvement she wants to have every book in the self-improvement aisle written by autonomy of course she's like unity from from rick and morty Morty. yes (laughs) assimilate assimilate um but i think as we get spacefaring we're going to see the storyline change because especially if we look at, um, while I know it's not canonical yet, if we look at the sequel short, for almost the novella, the for the Sixth of Dusk, we see that it apparently seems to be um, Skadrians versus Rosharans. Right. 
And so I think that as we move into the spacefaring era, we are going to see the meta the meta narrative change. Okay. Yeah. Could could the grand resolving thing in the background of the presumed the presumptive Hoyt is gathering all the investiture to remake Adelnasium. Um, could the could the story there be that the Skadrians and Rosharans have to unite to fight whatever the Night Brigade and and, and whatever they can do if they're leaving if they're leaving whole planets desolate? Well, because I would assume that with with the era of the spacefaring, they've moved beyond even where Naj was with the little silver gun with the shades in it. Sure. They could have entire shade cannons or potentially like orbital bombs. Right. That just have untold number of shades packed in. Or do, what do it, they have their own chorus? Oh, almost. Certainly. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, yes. <laughs> and so, so the fact <laughs> is, is that I could see that being a way that they leave a whole planet desolate is that they just, unleash shades on the entire thing and or whatever the deepest ones are or whatever yeah or that yeah honestly we don't know what the deepest ones are so yeah they could easily do that now i do have moving back a bit okay i do have an interesting question to ask hmm. why do you think those three rules um the rule of cool because set in an 1800s puritanical society even if it's you know front, kind of frontier um those things would be accessible for to to mess around with it's not like okay so that is the doyleist answer i'm looking for the watsonian answer what Okay, Doyleist and Watsonian is was used to refer to Sherlock Holmes. Doyle, or Sir Arthur Conan Doyle is the author, uh, and he has explanations for... So the Doyleist answer is, why did the author do the thing? The Watsonian answer is, what is the in-universe explanation? Oh. Mm, okay. Energy? Uh, I was going to say life. Life? They want life back, and so the flaring of heat and light... The spilling of blood, the running, all of those are very obvious answers to. Especially because fire is considered the like, I mean, we, we have so many myths around humans attaining fire, like right. it is such a core aspect of of humanity. That I think that that is the explanation for the the shades desire life again and so like think, examples of life both in it enrages them because they no longer have that yeah no the, yeah that's what i was going to say i think you know if they are spirits that want to move on to the great beyond any reminder of their past life or just of life in general is going to piss them off that makes sense yeah that makes sense <sighs> Which would be um, interesting. So, so this is definitely speculation. Could we see a way of bringing a shade back to life? Oh, I think whatever Adolin does with Maya will answer that question. Oh, that's interesting. Then that, that that's the that's going to set the precedent for a lot, which is why. I'm oh, curious. okay. So here's an interesting question: Could a shard blade kill a shade? permanently by severing its spirit web no well i, I don't know because we know that it can cut into the spirit web that's why they lose access to their arms when a shard blade passes through well well wouldn't the cognitive shadow at that point just be investiture wouldn't you just need its anti-investiture to be able to destroy it completely Mm -hmm. potentially so yeah. you would need the investiture of sloth to be able to <laughs> <laughs> although actually bringing up what uh something that you trevor brought up earlier um what about aluminum oh well aluminum blocks investiture silver kills it right uh yeah well yeah. we know when we know when um allomancers burn aluminum it gets rid of all of their investiture right 
but it, it gets it also, rid of their metal stores. Right. And then in, we see Ooh. Oathbringer, it blocks, it blocks the investiture from being detected. Um, and then mm-hmm. silver kills the spores and tress and kills shades. Um, well, well it, not hurts kills, shades. it hurts shades. Yeah, I don't know if it kills them. They seem to degrade silver. So whatever sure. goes on there means that the shades have more an effect on the silver than the silver do on the shades. Hmm. But I wonder if that has something to do with it being threnodite silver rather than regular silver. Because Trevor brought up the fact that threnodite silver seems to be referenced differently. Right. Yeah. Let's talk about let's talk about that real quick. Um, yes. You mentioned threnodite silver. Yes, it's it's. Um, I mean, a lot of people have asked him, right? And there's a lot of words of Brandon about it, and he keeps raffoing it. <laughs> I'm just, I just got a gut feeling that it's it's got to be different. Okay. I don't know. Could be. I want to say that it's it's invested, but I I think all metals are invested in the Cosmere to some level. You think so? I mean, well, we have the god metals. Right. Oh, what if threnodite silver is the god metal of ambition? Oh, and they just call it silver? Maybe it has like a different name. Yeah, maybe it actually has like yeah. the, the scientific name is different. They just reference it as silver I, yeah. on. That's probably my favorite theory now. There you go. Really well, like we that. did it. Everybody. <laughs> we, did it. <laughs> we did it. It's no longer um, raffled. We figured it out. <laughs> But in line with this, I do have a theory question for you guys. Okay. Hopefully it breaks your mind a little bit. Okay. Um, the Night Brigade, bringing okay. all this together. The Admiral has, you mentioned a continuity chain. Continuity chain, yeah. I don't think we know much of what that is, but I think we might have seen it before. Okay. Um, I think I mentioned it earlier, but there was a silver chain mentioned in the Continent of Realm and Oathbringer. And it's specified as Threnodite, from Threnodite. Uh-huh. Threnodite silver. Right. Do you think maybe those are connected and maybe that's, you know, because that's supposed to be what allows the Admiral to kind of force her will upon the shades and control them without vocalizing commands. Is that what that does? That's, I think that's what the uh, continuity chain does for her. Um, I'd be interested to see if that was the same thing in Oathbringer. Okay. Because it doesn't, it doesn't give you a lot of value. It doesn't. On char. No. It's just like, oh, look at that silver chain. Didn't didn't um, Rabonio also mention the silver chain? Mm. Uh, in Rhythm of War. Now I'm gonna look it up. Uh, I don't remember. I think in at the spoiler panel uh, at um, Dragon Steel, spoiler panel panel at Dragon Steel. He mentioned something about the continuity chain. Uh, Let's see. Okay. Uh, So from Rhythm of War, I have recently obtained a chain from the lands of the dead said to be able to anchor a person through cognitive anomalies. I fail to see what use it could be to me as I am unable to leave the Rosharan system, but it is a priceless object nonetheless. And that's Raboniel. Fascinating. Hmm. No, I want, I want your, can you, can you repeat that first part, Alex? Sure. I have ta- I have obtained an item from the land of the dead. I've recently obtained a chain from the lands of the dead said to be aimed said to be able to anchor a person through cognitive anomalies. So I wonder if that would, I wonder if that would be basically priceless for allowing somebody to travel from planet to planet through the cognitive realm, because I would assume those cognitive anomalies would potentially take place through like between planets and potentially allow you to survive through going into cell. Considering we know that the issue is, is there, or we we know what the issue is with their cognitive realm. Hmm. Yeah. That's. Um, 
you know, there's just a lot that we're going to find out. We're going to have to read and find out. That's, uh, now we know, do, we know that Dan Wells book is not taking place on Trinity. That's correct? right. He has said right. that it is taking place in a corner of the Cosmere yet to be, uh, dealt with. And that may be specifically about the horror genre part of it. Um, but also, also likely a new planet. Um, I'm really curious. Do you have any thoughts, Trevor, on, on what that is as we, as we wrap up here? Um, yeah, I got theories. <laughs> um, we know that it's, uh, I think they mentioned it's going to be like a horse like people. What? On this new planet. Like centaurs or like, I don't know. That's all I, I think Daniel green talked about it in like a video last year when it was like first announced. Um, and I'm very concerned now. <laughs> <laughs> I just all I can imagine is those horse people from that one episode of Rick and Morty. <laughs> I the, don't know why. But the I'm just he, picturing Bojack Horseman. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I don't know. Um, hopefully, it's in good taste. But oh. he, Dan Wells also mentioned he has a uh, a musical language he wants yeah, to tinker. That's and right. Wants to include it somewhere. That he's got a yeah, and, and he's written a conlang for it. Um, yeah. So I, I feel like the magic's going to revolve around music. That'll be neat. I feel like if they were going to do a musical language, though, it'd be better to have like a bird type people almost. <laughs> okay, bird horse type people, <laughs> centaur unicorns, centaur pegasi, centaur pegasi. Yeah. Um, Terra, Terra, Pterodactyl Centaur Pegasi. Uh, to get the bird part in there. I thought the Pegasi work. with the feathered wings entered the but bird the beak, part. But the beak with the... Nope. All right. Hippogriffs? Hippogriffs. Okay. Hippogriffs. Hip, hip, yeah. <laughs> Hippogriffs. Hippogriff centaurs. <laughs> yes. And then I forget, I forget where I saw it, but there was a good theory that the book will focus on the sleepless and what they're kind of up to in the Cosmere. That would be cool. What if it I don't want to get my hopes up. What uh, if it, yeah. so we know that we know that planets without a shard can still be invested. Right. Since we know that through six of dusk. Right. However, what if this new planet is intellect and whatever intellect is getting up to like the shard is shard of this planet is intellect. Yeah. Because we know is that, that intellect shark? is kind of hiding out, doing its own thing. Because no, technically no. Well, no, no, we don't know. Nope. But also sort of. What if it's, what if, it's theory. Valor? if you're gonna do you're gonna do horror, you know, you need bravery. Could it be valor? Okay. Could do could, could fight do valor. Fight. Yeah. yeah, valor could be setting up this for people to prove their bravery. Could mm. be invention and do a steampunk horror. That sounds awesome <laughs> it does sound awesome doesn't it It sounds very very unique which i'm down well it would just be victorian horror with extra steps yes that is true <laughs> so i mean which would work i mean like victorian right. horror is definitely a thing like right. that's that's yeah. just what i'm saying like i could see invention being the opera uh possibility what about mercy uh m maybe maybe uh, I mean, I see Valor or Mercy being equal options from different points of view. I think Mercy is hiding. You think Mercy is hiding? Hot take. I think Mercy is hiding. Okay. Well, I think she's scared of Odium after what she saw. Probably. probably. Yeah. That makes sense. I mean, my planet was going to feature both Invention and Mercy. That would be cool. But that was that's a whole different thing and totally yeah. non-canonical. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so yeah if you important. want if you want our hot takes on what the 16th shard are uh at the end of the previous episode we we published um we talk about why we think um intellect is the 16th shard uh we have good reasons yes do we have names for 15 now virtuosity was 15 oh really okay yeah yeah that was in uh, yumi. yumi yumi and the nightmare painter i just i just want to see whimsy man <laughs> I mean, just look Anything at a cat. Though. Just, it's in it's in the body of a cat. So just <laughs> there, you can see whimsy all day, any day. Just go find a cat. I do think that 
fairies or fey are on Whimsy's planet. They okay. Met, they, he name dropped those in the uh, Yumi. Whim Whimsy is the way we get cat girls in the Cosmere. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is <laughs> this is quickly spiraling. You were the one that said cat in the body of a cat, so. <laughs> yes, and I regret it. <laughs> I deeply and profoundly regret it. However, I actually think that probably Dan Wells is going to come or is, is his story is going to take place on an uncharted planet. Uncharted and uncharted. Yes, um, I've. Oh God, that never mind. That sounds bad. Yeah, yes it does. <laughs> um, however, I do believe that it is going to be on a planet with investiture, but no shard. Okay. Um, something like Six of the, the Dusk, where, um, maybe it was touched by a shard at one point because we know that Six of the Dusk has a perpendicularity. Right. Um, which would mean that there was a shard on the planet potentially at one point. Right. Um, could also still be an avatar of autonomy because she seems fond of that. Yeah. Pachi was an avatar of autonomy. Yeah. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Like, so do you think we'll see another version or iteration of, uh, undead on this new planet? Mm. We might, we might, I mean, every, every planet has one at this point. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Although we might actually see something akin to shades because if it's a musical magic system, we do know that music and things like that has long been tied into driving away, sh you know, spirits, letting them cross over, honoring spirits, honoring godlike beings, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I can see it honestly being much more tied to spiritual beings than physical mm. ones. Okay. Well, don't don't planets with uh, shards? Don't they have like their own rhythms? Like not just Roshar has rhythms, don't they? Right. Every rhythms? every shard has has a uh, has a rhythm. Yeah. So I mean, if it is a shard, I could see them kind of tapping into that magic source. That's true. Could Honestly, be. with a musical magic system, it can also be whimsy. Like that does that almost seems like a very whimsical magical system than anything else. To do, he always talks about him as like this horror? most chaotic being too. So I could see it. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not saying that whimsy is there now. I'm just saying that whimsy might have been oh, there at okay. one point. And okay. it's and all and and kind of like that one episode of Rick and Morty where the the world that Rick made for Beth turns into a horror oh land. Gosh. Um, whimsy's leftovers are wreaking havoc. It could uh, be, or whimsy just left behind the magic system of the music and sure. moved on, and so that investiture is still there, even though something else is now affecting the planet. Yeah, I mean, I I also like the idea, Griff. I think you said that, that it could be Mercy's, but in this case, she would have left. Yeah, kind of like how Honor's dead, Mercy's gone. Oh yeah, that Mercy could be. Planet. That would be good. That would be brutal. That would be. That would be because if Mercy's magic was there, keeping people, because because we can think that Mercy would, whatever their investiture would be, would be kind, would be. Things Mer like that. Merciful. Merciful. And if that's no longer being powered, or if it's rare. Or if it's been corrupted. Or if it's been corrupted, then I could see that turning into. Because, like, yeah, if. Autonomy sent something there to corrupt it. Boom. Boom. We get another autonomy as a bad person. So, what if it's something like. What if it was something like the returned from uh, Nalthus? Okay. But. Now that it's been corrupted, people are returning wrong. Kind of like Elantrians? Something. Well, because we know they returned, they died, and then they were offered the chance to come back. Mm hmm Right. As invested beings. Right? Yeah, they I were given they were given the the special breath yeah right the special breath and that returns them as so if it which is an interesting tie into the shades because technically are the returned cognitive shadows yes they are i'm pretty sure let me look it up then wouldn't I mean I feel like Thydekar would be going after whatever endowment could offer. Yes. 
They are classified as a type two invested entity. They are a kind of cognitive shadow. Boom. Okay. Okay. Wow. So on that front, I mean, we've already seen cognitive shadows being being used in a horror aspect with Threnody. So I could see a lot being done with a version of cognitive shadows coming back in a threatening way. Sure. Although zombies would be hard to justify just because there's not a whole lot of lore about them being affected by because like ghosts being affected by silver and all of that. That's I'm not saying that specifically has been done before, but ghosts like salt circles and things like that. Preventing ghosts right. has long been a thing. Zombies, not so much. There's not like usually it's shoot them in the head or cut the head off. Sure. What if it's an aluminum baseball bat? <laughs> Just smack him in the head. All the vestiture goes away. Yep. Negan style. Negan. Oh, man. I stopped watching it after that. Oh, you could do like aluminum barbed wire, maybe. I don't know. You can make Ooh. it work. Might be too soft for that. Might be. Yeah, but maybe. Yeah. All right. So as we as we wrap up the episode... What's what's the final thoughts here? Obviously, we're all excited for Dan Wells' horror novel. Right. I would love to see something more done with Threnody. And I think we're going to see more of their involvement with the Night Brigade coming into play with Sigzel. And just the fact that Naj was there with, obviously, Threnodite technology on Skadriel. I feel like they may not ever be the biggest players in the universe, but I think they're going to be big players. And I think we're going to see more of their involvement as things go on. Sure. And hopefully get answers. Hopefully. And not just Raffos. Which might be why he's raffling so much about Threnody is because of their involvement in the Cosmere going forward. Or he just hasn't figured it out yet. That also could be the case. Which he also raffos for. (laughs) That makes sense. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Okay. I have a good bad joke for you. Go for it. I loved yours from, uh, I guess it was the last week. I was like, oh, I got to come up with a joke for them. Thank you. <laughs> what do you call a detailed plan for killing the Lord Ruler? What? A Venn diagram. <laughs> Lovely. That was, that was inspired. <laughs> Were you invested in that joke? I I was. Um, Did you connect to it? I think <laughs> I would rank that as uh, storming brilliant. I think. Oh, thank you. Yeah, that was good. <laughs> not not breathtaking though. I get it. Yeah. <sighs> Griff, do the sign off before we have to hear any more of these. <laughs> well, until next time, uh, don't panic, world hoppers. Life before death. Strength before weakness. Journey before destination. All right, going back to the basics. See you next time. <laughs> the music you hear is part three, The Spirit, from Zavadella's The Music of Elantris, produced by B-Roll Records. Available now on Apple Music, Spotify, and most music providers. If you like what you hear and you want others to hear it as well, please leave a rate and review. It really helps us get more listeners. 